And so, as you all well know, that about three weeks ago, uh, Brandon Schneider, who had been with us for five years, uh, took the job at the University of Kansas. I would say that says a whole lot about our women's basketball program at SFA for a Southland Conference coach to be named to a Big 12. did a fabulous job, had a fabulous staff that put it together, and it was proven by two back-to-back -back conference championships. So the program going forward has an excellent future. We wanted somebody who would come in, move that program to the next level, the next notch. We believe we can do it here at Stephen F. Austin. So then we began to look for coaches. We wanted somebody who had been a head coach, somebody who was currently a head coach, somebody that had a great record, somebody that had – Texas ties that had an opportunity to recruit in Texas, preferably a Texan if at all possible, just because of the great high school relationships that we have. We wanted somebody who had uh, tasted maybe a Division I for a little bit, somebody who had a great record, somebody who had been in postseason play. All of those things put together. So we began to look, and we had an excellent field uh, of candidates, uh, many from uh, top Division I programs, but they weren't head coaches. They were assistant coaches. I was very insistent that we don't have an assistant coach. We have somebody who had been a head coach. This team deserved a head coach with a record, and that's what we wanted to bring to them. And we've decided on uh, our candidate and, and now our head coach, Mark Kellogg. Quickly about Mark. Mark has to be one of the winningest coaches, if not one of the best coaches in Division II, with his outstanding record. And you can see it on the handout that I won't dwell in statistics. But more importantly, he's won every place he's gone. He's been able to win at places where they didn't have a very good program when he first began. But he's moved those programs ahead. He's been in national championship games. A fabulous record, a fabulous recruiter. And more importantly, what really uh, kind of hit home for me in terms of making the decision not only because of his coaching opportunity, but he's a family man. He believes in his family. He's got two wonderful children. His wife made the trip down here uh, last week to look at our campus. And uh, all of that, with just the way he presented himself to our staff and our team, is that he was our choice, and we're very, very happy about that. Quickly about Mark. He may be a little travel-weary because of these thunderstorms. We tried to send him back to Amarillo uh, on Saturday. He made it as far as Dallas. And then had to get off the airplane and drive the rest of the way. Then he went back to the airport yesterday to catch that flight, only to find that it was canceled. Had to get in a car and drive to Dallas. Thank goodness for his parents who brought him the rest of the way down today. Uh, we're very happy to have him. So he, he'll be okay. He'll do a great job. But uh, I'd like to present the next women's basketball coach, Stephen F. Austin, Mark Kellogg. Mark. Thank you all, and for the turnout. I appreciate everybody taking the time to, to come today um, and, and enjoy this with all of us um, that are in the room. I want to first um, thank Dr. Patillo, um, Robert Hill, Lori McCary. She was here somewhere. There she is. Thank you guys for this process, for the opportunity, um, and entrusting in me and, and having that faith in me to run this program and continue um, what's been a great um, tradition at SFA, um, and in particular the women's basketball program. Um, if I could, I'd start um, with just a few thank yous um, beyond them. Um, you know, and, and quickly to West Texas A&M, without them, um, this, this opportunity would not be possible. There's great leadership there, um, and any time you take a coaching position, you want to take it um, where there is great leadership. Um, that's what drew me to SFA uh, with Dr. Patillo, Robert Hill. Those are things um, from a coaching standpoint that you have to have. They have to be in place for you to have success, and, and they gave me that opportunity at West Texas. The community um, rallied around it and supported it and, again, made it possible for me to be here. Um, beyond them, my parents are here today. Um, I grew up in Dallas, Texas, um, obviously. Without them, I would not be here either. Um, but they, they instilled so many of the qualities. And if I get emotional and start counting, I listened to somebody speak one time, and they said, if you get emotional while you're speaking, start counting. So they, she's like, one, two, three, start counting, and then you can kind of move past it. But if it wasn't for them, um, and, and some of the qualities they instilled in me, um, obviously, I, I know I wouldn't be here. Um, and part of it is, is I'm as competitive as they come. I always kind of joke, if you want to play me in checkers or horseshoes, I'm going to really try to kick your butt. And if there's anybody more competitive than me, it's actually my mother. 
Um, so believe it or not, that's where I got that from. And then my dad is the, is the level headed guy that if you need advice, that's my first phone call. So to them, thank you very much. Um, my wife, Trish could not be here today. She's back with the two kids. I have a, a seven and a six year old son and a daughter, um, Camden and Kaylee. And, um, as we all know, you're only as good as your true boss. Sorry. And that would be my wife. Um, and, um, you know, for her to, you know, to allow me to chase my dreams is something that's truly special. And, um, so I'm forever grateful to her. My college coach is here. Coach O, as I've always called him, um, made the drive down from Arkansas. And, um, you know, it, that relationship has gone from player to coach to friend and somebody else that I call on quite often, um, in time of need. So thank all of you guys for being here. So, all right, now I can move on to the emotional part can be over with. So to tell you how excited I am. Truly, truly excited for this opportunity. It is, it's emotional when you make changes. You, you go from one side of the spectrum to the other. You got to go tell your current team um, who you love to death what's about to happen. And then you quickly get to shift on the excitement of, of dealing with the new group. And, um, and I'm at that point now. So I can move past the other emotion once you get past the family and understand the task at hand. And for that, I, I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here. Obviously, growing up in Dallas, you know quite a bit about SFA. It's not unfamiliar to me at all. Um, and, I, and I'm excited for the challenge. Um, when you hear names like Sue Gunner, Gary Blair, um, even what Brandon Schneider has been able to do, and the Schneider name out in West Texas is, is pretty big. It's, um, you, you, there's a challenge, and, and I've never backed down from a challenge ever in my life. Um, this presents another one. It's going to be different. It's going to be unique in its own ways. Um, but there's so much here that's in place. I understand there's a team that, that has a lot of talent returning. Um, I'm excited to talk to them this afternoon. I have not been able to meet with them yet. Uh, met a few of them a couple days ago, but we'll meet a little bit further um, this afternoon. And I'm excited to talk to them, see what their goals are, give them my goals. Let's do this thing together. It's not going to be about me or it's not just going to be about them. Uh, we'll see if we can put all this together um, and, and do it that way. And that's the way that I work. Um, I, I want to base our, our program on a few pillars is what we call them. We're going to put our family, our faith, and our friends first. That will always be the most important thing to us. Second and third in there is athletics and academics, and I want to hold them accountable on both of those in the classroom, on the court. And then the third piece would be the life outside of basketball, in the community, places like that. Let's see if we can engage. Let's get out there. Um, if we'll keep our first three priorities in line, then I'll give them that life outside of basketball. Um, but this should be the best time of your life. I want this to be the best, let's say, four years of your life um, until you get married, until you have kids or things like that. Those will change. But when you leave here, my college experience was the best four years of my life. And I think I, it's, it's my job to get, make sure that our players um, have that same, same experience. Um, so we'll go off of that. And then we kind of talk about there's some, I just call them the C words that, that we want to be known for. And one of those is, is to be able to communicate, um, whether that's between the coaches within the community amongst each other. We're going to be a great a uh, great team that communicates. We're going to compete like crazy. Every drill we're going to do in practice, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. Um, and that's how we're graded and that's how we're judged. And, and you're getting a competitive coach. So I'm certainly going to instill some of those qualities um, in you. We're going to care for each other. Um, that would be one as coaches, players, my kids, my two children, young children will be just like you. They're going to be your best friends, your supporters. They go home and practice um, at home by your name and your jersey number and things like that. So you're going to have a huge impact um, on my family. And the last one is contagious. And this is the one that maybe is the most important to me now is, is I want this, or if it already is, I want this to be contagious. I want recruits to think that this is something so contagious that they can't live without. I want it to be so contagious that the community thinks that it's such a great, great um, event to come to a women's and men's basketball game um, on those double header nights, because it's just something that's so much fun. And let's build that energy and let's make it contagious. And when you get that going, that's something that's really, really special. And I've seen some pictures where the Coliseum's got 7,000 people in it. And I, could, I haven't been in that environment um, here, but I can, only cer I can certainly imagine what that's going to be like. And, and let's see if we can't get that um, night in and night out playing in there. Um, you know, we can talk basketball a little bit, recruiting. I mean, we're going to recruit, and we're going to recruit, and we're going to be Bulldogs and in that. Um, you know, there's great talent in East Texas. I'm, I'm very well aware of that. And then if you go down the Dallas, Austin, Houston, San Antonio, down that corridor, I, there, there's a ton of talent in there. Um, and if for some reason we can't find the talent that we need in those areas, then we can, well, we can go elsewhere. But I have a feeling it's going to be pretty good in those areas, and, and we'll wear that area out. 
um, you know, I like to play up and down. Um, I want to get after people. I want to create offense from our defense. That's what we've traditionally been able to do. Um, you know, we'll evaluate the current team and see how that comes into play. Um, but that would be the game plan coming in for sure, is let, let's give these fans something that they like. Um, in women's basketball, I want to speed up the play, turn people over, um, take great shots, not good shots. Everything that we're going to talk about is being extraordinary, not being ordinary. Let's be extraordinary or extraordinary would be the word. Um, it's so easy and it's so natural to be ordinary. Uh, I think it's my job to take players, um, student athletes, out of their comfort zone um, and make them uncomfortable. Um, similar to having, I guess, a personal trainer or something like that, you, um, you know, a weight coach, anything like that, that's just supposed to push you a little bit further, make you lift a little bit more weights, go when you think you're too tired. Um, and you just can't go. And so that's kind of my job. And I try to use the analogy like you're driving a um, stick shift car, which now some of these guys may not even know what that is. But um, you're driving a stick shift car, and we get kids, and they're, they're driving or playing in third gear. And my job is to try to teach them how to play in fourth gear and then ultimately fifth gear if we can and, and, and put them or push them to a level that they can't get to on their own. And, and that's kind of the strategy we have. Well, you'll hear that a bunch, guys, so just get used to it. Be extraordinary. Don't be good. Just let's be great. Um, those are kind of the things that we're going to talk about quite a bit in our program and push. And it'll start with recruiting, and it'll build, and, and we'll put together a great staff, and we'll all be on the same page, and we'll communicate and make sure that these guys get the best experience that they possibly can here at SFA. So with that said, I, I can't tell you how excited I am. It's, it's an emotional. It's been a crazy few days for me, um, but when the dust settles here in a few days, um, I'll start to remember some names and some faces, and then I hope you'll come by and introduce yourselves again, and I'll get out and try to meet as many of you as I can um, just to keep and continue to build the interest um, in SFA women's basketball. So with that said, I guess we'll take some questions, and then we'll go from there. Well, I mean, that, that's a big question. I don't know how long do you have if you want that one. Um, and it, any specific way you want that on the court, recruiting? Yeah, any of that. Okay. Um, so here we go. Sit back. No, I mean, I, you know, the philosophy, I mean, the philosophy starts with those pillars of our program and what we believe in. And, and so we're going to start with those, and then we're going to filter from there. Um, you know, but it all, everything we do is going to go hand in hand. I, there's always a why, um, and that's kind of what I told some of the guys the other day. There's always a why as to what we're doing, what we're doing. Um, we don't just do a drill to do it in practice. There's a reason we're doing that. Um, there's not, a, you know, there's a why as to why we eat the pregame meal the way we eat the pregame meal. I mean, there, there, there's always something behind it. Um, I think back in the day when we coached, if you wanted somebody to, to run through the proverbial brick wall, you screamed and yelled as loud as you could to get him to do it, and then the kid would eventually run through the wall. Now we have to explain to them why it's important for them to go run through that wall. And if for some reason or somehow you can make them believe there's – a good reason to run through the brick wall, then they'll go run through that brick wall. But they're not just going to go run through the brick wall because you scream and yell. Um, so I don't know. I, I probably could answer that question one-on-one -on -one with you more than, than sitting here and talking for 20 or 30 minutes on my overall philosophy. Well, I mean, the, the goal is to win the Southland Conference regular season tournament. Um, advance in the NCAA tournament. Um, those would be the goals. I want to be realistic with them. I don't want to come here and tell you we're going to win a national championship in three or four years. Um, I, don't, I, I would love to do that, but I don't know, you know that we can quite do that yet. Um, but certainly we can win the Southland Conference. That's been done um, here recently. Um, now the next step is to win the conference tournament. Um, you know, and, and I know that probably is what's motivating these kids on this team that are sitting here right now. And, and I've, we've been able to do that. I've had success winning conference championship. I've had success winning conference tournaments. That's the step. I want that for these kids. I know they want it so bad. Um, you know, but we're not going to press. We're just going to use the regular season to prepare us for that conference tournament and then do what we've been doing all year. And uh, usually that, um, that has worked for me in the past. Yeah, well, we'll go, we'll go speak, we'll go talk. I mean, I'll use the players because it's not always that they want to hear the coach stand up here and talk. A lot of times it's getting to know the players. Have, building that relationship is, is what we would like to do. And it's, it's going to be about relationships. The first four months here will be the majority of that for me and, and, and the current players. And I've got to essentially re-recruit them. And we'll start that process this afternoon. Um, and then it's getting out into the community, to the different organizations, speaking to whoever will listen. Um, 
and, and getting the players out there as well. And, and they're going to have to enjoy that process a little bit. We won't kill them with it, but they'll be out there and they'll be seen and they'll have those discussions. And, and then obviously putting a great product on the court will, will help that tremendously. Uh, but we've got to establish some relationships or, or continue those. If they're already there, let's do that and then see if we can't go find some new ones.